Good evening, everyone. So we are beginning the Holy Week with Palm Sunday. The Mass begins with a short procession, but you will be remaining in your pews and for the palm distribution as well. The ushers will bring the palms to you. So please rise. And if you could turn towards the entrance. Dear sisters and brothers, since the beginning of the Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald the whole church, the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal mystery. That is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city of our salvation, following in his footsteps so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty of loving God, sanctify these branches with your blessing that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him, who lives and reigns forever and uh, ever. Now let's listen to a gospel passage. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethpage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite to you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a cart tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, why are you doing this? Reply, the master has need of it and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a car tethered at a gate outside on the street and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the cord? They answered them, just as Jesus had told them to. 
and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the call to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches, and they leafy branches that they had cut from the trees. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the king, kingdom of our father David that is to come, Hosanna in the highest. The gospel of the Lord. Comes the nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of glory? How shall Let us pray. Almighty of a living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and summit to the cross. Graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheek to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Oh, God. 
A reading of the, from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness and found in human appearance. He humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said... When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly genuine spikenard. 
she broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has that man just voice to puppet? They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will always have with you. And whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for the burial. Amen, I say to you. Wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priests to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Whatever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparation for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one by one. Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I bring it anew in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, Although you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, This very night before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. 
Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It's enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with one of them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain a testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, And within three days I will build another, not with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to, as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him. And the guards greeted him with, bl with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court. Then the cock crowed. 
the maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, Once again, he denied it. A little later, the bystanders said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man whom, about whom you are talking about. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him. Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Pilate said to them, Why, what evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, and kept striking his head with a reed, and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, the king of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, Those who were crucified him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. 
And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabatani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave out a loud cry and breathed his last. Please rise. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he had breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among, among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger James and of Joseph and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of the preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled the stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Today we celebrate both Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday. Palm Sunday reminds about the Jesus triumphant entry into Jerusalem. As the prophets have foretold, the Messiah enters into the holy city riding on a donkey. Once again, being a king was a difference. He comes to reign in the hearts and minds of the people. And we listen to the beautiful second reading of today. Where Paul says, though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself. Or Jesus humbles himself 
No, just think about the creator becoming a creature. The master becoming a slave and giving his very life as John would say so that we may have life life in abundance as we are entering into the holy week especially during the holy triduum we will be commemorating the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The path that our Lord and Master has shown us to bring about lasting peace and justice in the world. As we begin the holy season, a holy week let's ask the grace from the Lord and as we go through this week this experience may enrich our lives as Jesus humbled himself and gave his very life for each one of us he invites each one of us to humble ourselves love the one true God so that we can live alive as children of God Please rise. Now the prayer a petition takes place. We offer to God our concern for the church and the world with humility. Jesus showed in his life and death. We offer to God our concern for the church and the world with humility, Jesus showed in his life. Oh, I'm sorry. That the leaders of nations promote peace and respect the dignity of all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Pope and the bishops, obedient to the call of Jesus, receive grace to carry his cross humbly in the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those among us facing a crisis of faith may find renewed hope in the scriptures, rites, and prayers of Holy Week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who will be baptized and received into the church at Easter Vigil, that these final days of preparation will be a time of transforming grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those near death, embrace the cross of Jesus and rise again to see God's face in glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our parish, celebrate this holy week with renewed faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, especially Ed Slavic, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Merciful Father, you call us each year to remember your son's entry into Jerusalem and celebrating his passion, death, and resurrection. Hear our prayers and give us grace to follow Christ even to his cross. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord.
God wash me with your grace and cleanses from my sins. Brothers, sisters, and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept his sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand. And by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ uh, our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you. As in joyful celebration, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you call again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray, the Patrick King of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope, William our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in a mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who are pleased to you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co as to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the service command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Or lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who love and reign forever and uh, ever. The peace and joy of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ 
keep us safe for eternal life. For those in the parking lot listening to 90.1 and would like to receive communion, please drive your vehicle to the entrance of the church. In the prayer for spiritual communion, my Jesus, I believe that you are present in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire you with all my heart. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already in my heart and unite myself to you completely. Please do not let me ever be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Nourish with these sacred gifts. We humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us, brought us to hope for what we believe. So by his resurrection, you may lead us to word you call through Christ uh, our Lord. We shall pray together. Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in bear. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. A few reminders before the final blessings. We are entering into the most important part of this celebration, the Holy Week and the Triduum. So please make every effort to participate the liturgical celebration during the Triduum. Thursday, we have the Lord's Supper at 7 p.m. And Good Friday services will be 12.30 p.m. And Good Friday, after the services, we will begin the Divine Mercy Novena. So that will go nine days, and we will conclude Sunday after the first Easter. That will be the Divine Mercy Sunday. And the Vigil Mass will be at 8.30 p.m. And Easter Sunday Masses, as our usual time, that will be 8.15 at St. John's and 10.15 here. All of the Triduum celebrations for both parishes will take place here in this church. The Lord be with him. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thank you everyone for being part of this Eucharistic celebration. Also would like to thank those who join us through the live stream, those who listen us through the radio, and those who will be participating through YouTube. Thank you and wish you a holy and blessed, a holy week.